by your radio station and send you home. Wendy Williams, experience, experience, experience. Okay, so... I have a recorded phone call that I did with Tyra Banks from yesterday, and I'm going to play that for you in a few moments. Um, the show was um, virtually over at that particular point, so I said I'll save it for you. But at first, I wanted to let you know. All right, I already told you that um, Joey Lawrence is going to be doing a bunch of shows for um, Half and Half. Joey Lawrence, right, from Give Me a Break and Blossom and whatnot. Well... At first, they were dying, denying the real-life romance between him and Essence Atkins because, you know, that's the romance on the show. But it's really going down in real life, too. They're coming clean. And here's what Joey told People Magazine. Yes, we've been out to dinner a few times. We were on the phone all the time. Essence blows my mind. I'm in awe of her. It's incredible, unbelievable. And we're having a great time together. We get along extremely well. There's a brilliant rapport going on. Essence says, we have the basis of a great relationship and we'll see what happens. At the, um, at the minute, there's a lot of pressure on doing the show, but we're real close. Very emotional. And an insider from the show Half and Half told People Magazine this. It's not a big shock to any of us because there's sexual tension between Joey and Essence on the very first day that they did rehearsal. There were times before they hooked up when I'm sure some of us were thinking, just get a room all ready, because it's about to go down. So that's what's going on with them. In the meantime, Ray J, Brandy's brother, is mad at Kyla Pratt from the show One on One, because Kyla Pratt is dating a white man. <laughs> that's basically what it all comes down to. Look at the girl Fridays all lined up like angels on Christmas Day. They're all leaning on their elbows, leaning over, listening. Boy, that's good listening, though. This is how I always picture people listening to the radio. Like, you know, when something good happens, they, they lean forward on their elbows and put your hands in your chins. Go, girls. And they got the best seat in New York. Yeah, right? yeah, right there. Yeah, that's a good seat. <laughs> so listen, right? Do you girls watch one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, I watch it. Okay, do you know who I'm talking about when I say that there's a, there's an actor on there? Um, uh, the, the, the white guy? Um, what is his name? Let me hold. Jonathan Chase? No, they have new characters up there. <laughs> no. Well, there's a guy named Jonathan Chase. He's white. And he, he played her boyfriend on the show. He did? Well, he's her boyfriend in real life, too. Oh. And so here's the quote from a show insider. Ray J. Is Ray J even on this show? Yeah, he is. Oh, he is? He's okay. A well, here it is. Ray J is not happy talking to Kyla because Kyla is dating Jonathan. It's clear to everybody on the set that Ray J has a problem with a sister dating a white guy, and he's giving Kyla the silent treatment. With Jonathan, it's even worse because Ray J doesn't. Uh, Ray J gives him the thuggish growl. Oh, brother. <laughs> He was so bad yesterday as the cast was in rehearsals that Jonathan spoke to um, Unetta. Unetta apparently is the executive producer of One on One and Cuts. Um, Jonathan spoke to Unetta about Ray J's behavior towards him. Jonathan really looked scared of Kyla just rolling her eyes at Ray J while he was all hugged up with Jonathan. And Ray J gets mad. Oh, stay tuned, everybody. Mm -hmm. Brandy's brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what VH1 is doing? They're doing this show called VH1 Rock Docs. It's a new documentary, and it kicks off in January with DMC, of Run DMC. Anybody ever wonder what DMC feels about the new show Run's House? Yeah, we never got a chance to talk to him about it, but listen, he's been focusing on his own show. Are you ready for his drama? The program is going to focus on DMC adjusting to the new realities that he's discovered in his biological history. See, my household isn't the only one going through something. The special is going to premiere with, first of all, his new video called Just Like Me, taken from his forthcoming CD called Checks, Thugs, and Rock and Roll. Here's his quote. The last five years of my life have been an emotional storm of change. The profound personal loss of the death of Jam Master J and my father, and then the shocking discovery that I was adopted... And the pain and the impact of living in a world that is being ravaged by war continues to destroy so many lives. This album is not something I wanted to do. It's something that I must do. Wow, so he just found out that he's adopted, too. Wow. Can you imagine finding that out, uh, you know, wow. so late in life? Wow. That would explain why you don't look like your parents. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen his parents, but you know. Anyway, so let's get to the tire. Um, DMC, I'm sorry to hear about so much going on in your house. DMC, Wellington, Carrington, 
Hunter Williams mm-hmm. <laughs> joined the club. And his throat was all messed up on top of it. What? And his throat was all messed up on top of it. I know. I wasn't going to say anything about that. It's not just his throat. You have throat. to. It's not just his throat. It's a whole, almost like a, like he has a hole in his palate or something. There's a whole mm-hmm. thing going. He's a really nice guy. But That's from all them years of yelling, I'm the king of rock. Oh, his whole delivery is like, oh, wow. Wow. Ah. I don't know if I can step through a whole half hour or so with this girl, not talking like that. Anyway, let's roll the, the let's roll uh, yesterday's behind the scenes phone call with Tyra. She called, she wasn't able to call uh, during the show, so I taped. All right, press the button. Hello, hello, hi. We're still waiting for Tyra. She's just finishing her call with her mother. Actually, 30 30 oh, okay, thirty seconds. Okay, what is what are we on the set right now with the show? Yeah, she's in her dressing room actually. Yeah, oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Are we taping it in a break and then you can air it later? Yes. Okay. So let me ask you, um, you just finished taping, so she calls and talks to her mother about the show that just happened, or, or is, <laughs> is it an emotional moment? What kind of call is that? She, she talks to her mother all the time. So. Yeah, yeah. Her mother uh, frequents the show so far. I've seen yes. a few episodes with her mom in there. Mm-hmm. I like that. So who are you, her publicist? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm Kim, her publicist, yeah. Oh, how you doing? How long have you worked with her? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm the publicist for the Tire Bank show. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, do you like your job? I love it. Yeah. What show did you come from? Because a lot of times when they do talk shows, they they bring people from old shows or you, whatnot. Oh, I've, I've been on uh, doing publicity for like five years. I used to do personal publicity and everything. So. Yeah. Who have you worked? But, um, who's who have you worked for that we already know? Are we interviewing right now or? No, I'm just there. Oh. I'm just I'm just waiting. I'm impressed. Sorry, I just want to make sure. Yeah, no, because I'm figuring you don't just, you know, come from, you know, no background to handle the Tyra Banks experience because that's a lot of work. <laughs> so, like, have you done, like, Ellen or Montel or whatnot? I did Sharon Osbourne, which was pretty cool. So. Oh, that that's nice. Were you her uh, publicist just for the show or for her whole? I was just the publicist for the show, yeah. Mm. So that that job lasted all of five minutes. <laughs> Kim, you ready? Tyra's ready. Tyra's ready? Great. Oh, Hello? T- terrific. Hey, Tyra, it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm so good. So, we've never met before. I saw you at a party years ago when you used to date John Singleton. No, I met you on the red carpet at an event. Oh, that's right. No, stop. That's right. I was asking you about Chris Weber. You said, no, Wendy, stop. Yeah. Don't ask me that. My friend, my uh, my stylist, Wendy, you don't understand. She's the biggest fan of you. She, like, never is around me during my interviews, but she's in the room right now. Her name is Q, and she's flipping out that I'm talking to you on the phone right now. Wow. I'm glad. Say hi, Q. Hi, Q. <laughs> so now, Tyra, the the phone call that you just placed to your mother, I'm just a little curious. I understand you just finished taping. Was it an emotional show and you had to weigh in with your mom? Wait, just right now? Yeah. Oh, no, it was, it's, you know, some of my shows are emotional. I've had, I had an emotional one today and then my next one is going to be fun. Yeah. So what were you and your mom talking about? Look at you all up in my business. I, I mean, you know. Uh, <laughs> We were actually talking about the show, and then we were talking about the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. Yeah, because that's when we're finally going to meet. You're going to come in the studio when you come to New York for the Victoria's Secret Fashion Show. Oh, I didn't know that. Is that planned? Yes. Oh, I didn't know. Well, yeah, because I don't want to give you the full, you know, the full interview right now because we're we're going to be in business. The phone is acting crazy right now. No, that was Goose. He knocked the phone, and 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 so now we're back normal. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um. So anyway, so when you come to New York, what is that in in December? Um, it's in November. It's in a week. It's in one week. Okay. So they said that you only have a certain period of time, but you're going to come over to the studio here on Park Avenue. We said we're going to try and work it out. Oh. <laughs> come on, Tyra. I'm going to try. Wendy, you know what I do? I'm coming in on a red eye. Okay. So I'm doing the fashion show and leaving right after the fashion show. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to be able to come, but I can try. So then I might as well not lose this moment. I might as well just talk to you now. Yeah, because it's, it's tight. I don't even get to sleep in New York. So how much advice on your show is Oprah giving you? I know that you guys um, are great friends, and I used to love when you'd go on her and do the look for less. I love that you are cheap. Thank you. I still am very cheap. I'm trying to learn to spend money because... You know, for taxes, you really you can't just keep everything. And now you're making so much, exactly. <laughs> so I'm learning to spend, but no, Oprah has, has been very a, a very big part of, of me doing this because a while ago she told me that she thought that I could do this, and that's like a, a very big compliment coming from her. Uh huh. And um and I had the best training ground from her. Of course, she's the best in the business. So for her to you know for me to be on her show for two seasons like that was the best training. 
And so, um, for the show, uh, you've done some some very interesting things, including I love the Paris Hilton um, dress up. I yeah, I can't wait to see the fat suit show. I know that that comes on next week, where you put on the fat suit and you yes. walk around town. Tell me what that was like. Um, you know, putting that on and, and the reception that you got from people. Well, you know, it was crazy. I was actually had a at breakfast with a bunch of my friends and we were sitting around just talking about a bunch of stuff. It was different races. There was an, an Asian, black, and, and white white friends. And um, they started talking about about people that are obese. And they started talking about it in such a negative way. Mm-hmm. And I was like, do you hear yourself? If, if you guys were talking about race in the way that you're talking about somebody that's obese, you'd be having a knockdown, drag out fight at this table right now. Right. And and why is, 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 is obesity the, the, the almost one of the last accepted forms of discrimination that you can discriminate and make fun of people in public and I was like you know what I'm doing a show about this yeah and um and then I thought about it even further and and I was like you know what I want to experience it because I I, I I've never experienced that of course and but the, the difference is I I had to, I did the experiment and it was definitely one of the most heart-wrenching uh, days of my life because as soon as I stepped out of the car people were t- like there was this group of people that were 10 feet away from me and they were pointing and uh-huh. laughing and staring at me and they were right in my face so now is this going to lead to you doing like a weight loss show where you help you know girls lose weight like wh- how you, what's, what's your spin on this um you know what i haven't really thought about where i'm going to take it i'm going to see what the response is the response is already so big and i haven't even aired the show yet do you still have your um your your um uh, camp Tyra or Tyra's yeah ca- my T-Zone camp yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's right because you mentioned that on the show how, yes. long, how long have you had that I've had T-Zone for five years so now you're finished with Victoria's Secret I was uh, gossiping about that the other week do I have it correct um, you're, you're just so busy right now and this is going to be your last Victoria's Secret fashion show now will you still be doing the catalog um, actually, no, I'm retiring from modeling. Oh, oh. Yeah, so this is like my last catwalk ever. Isn't that great? Yeah, I'm totally retiring from modeling. And it's not because I'm so busy right now. What it is, Wendy, is I've always had a plan. Uh-huh. I've always had a plan and knew that modeling couldn't be something that I ha- that I could do forever. Yeah. And so I planned for the, for the end at the beginning. And when I was 18 years old, I knew I wanted to do a talk show. So where's the end of, because you see the talk show, I guess, you know, can go on for a while. You seem to be getting a good reception. I, you know, quite frankly, I thought that you'd be canceled almost as soon as you came on but you managed to turn it around and then don't take that in a bad way i'm just oh being, i don't take it in a bad way I'm, I'm just being honest but you seem to have turned it around you know i get i find myself you know watching you know you do the relationships you know i i hated the license uh the picture license show i, oh, I everybody loved that oh god I, oh well, that was so painful but you have turned it around and i see that there's a place for the tyra bank show how long is america's next top model going, going to go on um, I'm not sure how, how long America's Next Top Model is going to go on. I thought it would be around for one or two seasons, and now we're filming our sixth season now. Wow. Five is on television right now, but we're actually in production for six. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. And so, do you ever talk to some of the girls? Like, I think Takara is a perfect representative of America's Next Top Model. I, mean- I love Takara. She touches my heart. She's come on this show. She's like a correspondent for the Tyra show. Yeah. So she's come on this show and you're going to see a whole bunch more of her. So I keep in touch with her. I keep in touch with a lot of the girls. Now, have you been out with Henry and Eva yet? I, You know what? I haven't necessarily hung out with them, but I, I went to the, the, what was that? The Some award show and, and they sat next to me at the award show. They look really sweet. Did you see her ring? No, I haven't seen any of that. She got the engagement <laughs> ring. It's five carats. It's fabulous. I'm not sure if that's true if they're engaged. I don't know about that. They're in love. I definitely that, but I don't know about engaged. Well, um, all right. So let's talk about your love life. Well, let me tell you something though, Wendy, Uh-oh. because my friend said that you said that you're a friend that I'm your friend in your head. You are. I love that. Here's the thing. You know when you became a friend in my head in a weird kind of way. I mean, we're not best friends in my head, but you're a friend in my head because you're cheap. Oh. And I loved your your time. You'd go on Oprah and you would talk about how, you know, you go to Targets and this is what you get and, and this is how you do it. Because, you know, whether you have a talk show, America's Next Top Model, or you're just a model, you, you've had a very moneyed career. Yeah, but I, I don't really look at my career as that. I look at more of the achievements as opposed to the money. Which, and which the I money love. I just kind of save and put away and share with my family. But I don't, monetary things don't get me excited. Which I love. And I also like your relationship with your mother. Thank you. Yeah, I like that a whole lot. But let's talk about your love life. Okay. Okay, so um, so are you are you in love? I um, I don't really talk about that too much. But what I, I tend to talk about more is like past stuff. 
Because if I say I'm single, everybody's going to be like, oh, and then they're going to see me with somebody else and be like, oh, she's with this one, she's with that one. Or if I say that I'm with somebody, then they're going to try to track down that. So I feel like this kind of like a no-win situation. Yeah. So you, um, so you might as well spell it. I, I know you would love that, wouldn't you, Wendy? Yes. Because then I'd be your best friend in your head. <laughs> so, all right. Let's talk about John Singleton. What about him? Whitney, you're just going way back. Well, you know, he's a friend of the show. He's been, he just came yeah. here about two months ago. He explained that he has five kids with five different babies' mothers. Oh. Did he have all that going on when you were dating him? No, I was 19 years old when I dated him. All naive. That was a long time ago. He's a good guy, though. I, you know, I can't really speak for that, but he's, he's still a good guy, and he's still close to my family. This, my mom loves him still. So apparently he never beat you. What? I just asking. I've just, never been hit by a guy ever in my life, and he has never hit a woman. Just asking. So, you and Ananda, if you're in a party together, do you say hello to her and, is, you know, flip your hair in her face? Do you splash champagne on her, why or do you I, just avoid? Why would I be mean to her? Well, Wendy? you know, it's that whole Chris Webber thing. Oh God! I don't think there's a rivalry with her. Well, can you just break that down? Since that's a past thing, you're no, you're no longer involved with him. Yeah. Can we talk about that? He's good. That's a good man. He's a sweet man. You can tell by his smile. He's a good guy. It just it just didn't work out for us. But he's, he's a good, sweethearted, kind man. Was he cheating on you with Ananda? Uh, Wendy, this is not the interview that I wanted to have. But this is something I have no idea what that man was doing behind my back or in front of my face but he's a good guy he's a really really good guy but I don't che cheating and I've never even thought about that how long were you guys together Wendy <gasps> this is this ain't got nothing to do with my talk show but I love you because you're really good at what you do because no. you know how to get answers out of people no but listen I'll you tell know how to do it Wendy. I'll tell you, you something so I'll tell you something about that talk show the talk show is fueled off stuff like this people you know these days celebrities you know you can be the best singer you can be the best talk show host but you become a big bore if people don't know more about you like what is your panty of choice do you prefer thongs briefs <laughs> or nothing at all I love you Wendy Oh, really? Thank you so much. But I've been around for a long time, and I've never really had to talk about that. Hey, uh, well, well, and you've been around a long time, too, Wendy. And I still do. And welcome to the experience. Exactly. So, look. So, you and Chris, had, how come you broke up? Wendy, I, I'm not going to talk about all that. The implant thing? Oh. This is only my personal opinion. You did a good job with that. I still believe they're implants. Oh, I'm so sorry that you believe that. It's okay. Yeah, and I and I don't and I knew some people would believe that even though they saw my breast really to my navel. But I know a lot of people would believe that that, but that doesn't bother any, me anymore. Any it would have bothered me before I did it, but after I've done it, it's like, you know what? I did it and I don't believe that you believe that they're fake. I think you're just saying that for the radio. No. Yeah. No, I, I honestly, I honestly, no matter what you tell me. No, I have implants and I've gotten them replaced after seven years. And I know that they, they do swing pendulously. And no, then, they do and not. They, well, Wendy, my they so do not. And you know that. No. You know that. Because you've talked about plastic surgery so much. The first time I ever um, heard you on the radio was a couple of years ago in New York City years ago. And you were talking very openly about plastic surgery. So I love you it. Know, I you love know it. that. Yeah, I You're shock jocking right now. I love it. Do you get Botox? You're shock jocking. Do you Botox? Oh, no. I don't need that. We're black. Hey, look at, Jas black. Hey, look at Jasmine Guy. Oh. We're black, Wendy. We don't need that. Mm. Good black does crack. That. <laughs> but Wendy, I gotta go. I gotta go run oh, and do my other show. But thank any, you so any much. Any more? Any more music in the future? Um, no, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll definitely see. I, I had to decide between the that and the talk show, and I had to decide in which one I was better at. And I'm much better at doing a talk show than singing. You got to leave that to the Whitney Houston Amen. everybody. But, but you know, one day I could possibly do something, but never on a big scale. Any, definitely never on a big scale. Any more movies? Um, I definitely do want to produce movies mm -hmm. and um, maybe star in them. But I'm, I'm really. Really excited about my executive producing and producing right now, so that's what I'm going to be concentrating on. But and, I got to go, Wendy. I got another and show Janice tape. Dickinson. I got another show tape. I love Janice, and I love you, Wendy, and you're mm -hmm. a friend in my head now too. All right. But I love. It. I got to go. These people are killing me. Goodbye. Okay. Bye. It's Wendy, man. I got slayed so well. Made me do things I don't even do to my husband. Oh, oh my God. God. The Wendy Williams experience. Shot at winning one.
thousand dollars cash. We're gonna give it to you just like that. Flip, 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 flip. Then listen for Steve again at 12:15, and then again at 5:15. Be the tenth caller, and you're an instant winner. Cut it, fold it up, put it in your pocket. It make a nice little hump in there. Put a rubber band on it. Make everybody thank you, boss. It's a one hundred and seven thousand dollar cash guarantee on one hundred seven point five WBLS. Today's R and B and classic soul. Oh yes, and the Wendy Williams experience. High five is coming in for our next break. Not this one, the one after. Mm. Hey, the weekend's here. Don't forget about the shadow. Tonight, it's free Friday night with Super Rockin' Mr. Magic. Tomorrow night, check chill out. Saturday night at the Shadow. It's elbow to elbow all weekend long. Tonight, Mr. Magic. Tomorrow, Chuck Chill Out. The Legends spin at the Shadow. That's not the tagline. I just made that up. The Legends. The Shadow Nightclub where the Legends live. BLS is preparing for our, our ultimate Christmas party with a purpose. We do it every holiday season. This year, the proceeds are going to benefit the anti-domestic violence programs Safe Horizon and Day One. Yeah. There's free buffet. Live entertainment, booze, and all your WBLS personalities. I'll be there with ball. Oops. What was I getting ready to say? I'll be there with balls on. <laughs> with bells on. You know what I mean? Oh, Mark Jordan, he might greasing up his gray. I can't figure out why he just lets it go. I mean, I don't mind the honesty. Do you know what I mean? The woman who does my colon, you know, she just lets it grow. And I'm just like, you know, you're still a young woman. I mean, I, I have no problem with it. But it's just like, it's like art with the patch. <laughs> and I put a little mascara on Art's patch every once in a while. He lets me. Mark Jordan has all of his hair. And he's not an old man. Why the gray? I never asked him that. Or maybe I have. I don't remember what he said. It shows his maturity. Well, working at this station shows his damn maturity. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And mine, too. And yours, too, for listening. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being grown and sexy and gray, I guess. I guess that's why the 6 o'clock hour is usually sponsored by AARP. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. Anyway, so I'll say Mark Jordan will be there. <sighs> Me and Champagne will be there, too, with our roots touched up. And Ann Tripp, too. We ain't going out like that. <laughs> <laughs> Where am I going with this? Hal, even Hal Jackson covers his grays. <laughs> hey, Hal. Hey, Debbie. Hey. They'll be at the party. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let me just give you the date and change the topic. <laughs> foot and mouth. Foot and mouth. Mm. All right. Look. December 17th, the Marriott Ballroom. Once the booze starts flowing, we'll give you more jokes. Does Steve Harvey have gray? Oh, hell no. He stays on top of that. Hell to the gnaw. He's Greek. <laughs> Perfectly Grecianed up or whatever's going on up there. Yeah. Hey, Jordan, maybe, I mean, you know, there's a little something. I'll leave you my mascara in your in your locker, in your slot, and then you just, you know, touch up, you know, in the middle of the day. It's really easy to be done. You can do it yourself. Just, just a little, you know. Does Is one... Oh, Vaughn is more salt than pepper. But he always wears a baseball hat. And he folds it so he's got a youthful old guy look. And plus he's tall and he's not hunched pants. over. And he wears leather pants. In the summertime. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Vaughn. We'll see you at 7. It's the Vaughn Harper Show right after the Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WBLS. I'll keep the seat warm because I'm up next. <laughs> <laughs> Something big is coming to New York this November. No, it's not another convention or some parade named after a department store. And nothing of its kind has ever been seen here before. What's up? This is John Starks. What's up? This is Musa Muhammad, wide receiver for the Chicago Bears. Hey, yo, what's poppin'? This is your boy, Ron Artest, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Yeah.
Hey, what's happening? This is Dwelle. This is Faith Evans. Congratulations. WBLS. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Eric Benet. Hey, hey, hey. This is your girl, Angie Stone. Hi, this is Brian McKnight. Congratulations, BLS, on winning the Marconi Award for Station of the Year. Congratulations, BLS. For Urban Station of the Year. 107.5. It's the Wendy Williams experience, everybody. Thank you so much for turning us on. Hey, Risha, can you just check in the pink room and see if a high five is here? Because okay, sure. this is their time for their close-up, and if they don't show up, then that means that they're running into Benzino and Dave May's time. Source Magazine will be in the building for our next break, so. Okay, do you want me to bring them in? Here? Yes, yeah, hustle them in here. <laughs> She's good. She's intern during the week and babysits during the weekend. Oh, yeah? I came in the room one night and my son was sitting in her lap. You know, she looks like Halle Berry. You know what I'm saying? My husband and I had to give him a lecture. You know what he's doing. But we had to give him a lecture. Kevin, come here. And then they talked, you know, man to boy. You know, father to son over there in the corner. But I know what they were talking about. Because my son, it's like living with Hef. Risha, I was talking about how my son, you know, before my husband and I went out, he's, you know, you know what I mean? Was sitting in your lap and stuff like that. I know he found you absolutely a charming, the best babysitter. He keeps asking, "When's Risha coming back over?" <laughs> he knows what's going on. When's she coming back? <laughs> mm -hmm. Was he a handful? No, he just. He know, was something else. He is really smart. He's extremely. The things that was coming out of his mouth, he, was, he just knew. He was just like. What kind of stuff were you talking about? Like he wanted the extra donut. Uh huh. And he was trying to bribe me, like you know, con me into giving him an extra donut. What did he tell you? He was like, I said, well, I don't know where it is. He said, it's right up there. I was like. <laughs> It was up really high. I put it on top yeah, of the cabinet. Like, Listen, just give me one more donut, but don't tell my mommy. <laughs> I was like, but well, what if I give him a donut and then she counts it and then I'm going to get in trouble? So he sat there. He was like, okay, I'll just eat this one. <laughs> oh, the one that he had in front of him. Yeah. Yeah, because I left him one in the, the, in the Ziploc bag. And That's he it. he wanted me to read two books for him, but he wanted to keep the TV on. So we had to compromise. <laughs> a lot of compromising going on. He's smart. He's really smart. My mommy went in your show. Wendy. Wendy got you here. Wendy went They don't let them bring um, toys to school anymore because, you know, the kids, you know, they're in kindergarten now and nobody knows how to share and every, you know, like that. So his teacher said no more toys in school, so he totally understands that rule. Today is the first day of show and tell after the no toy rule for about one month, you know, that was the first day. But they had to bring something that starts with an M. So I said, Kevin, today is show and tell. You got to bring something that starts with an M. And I have the perfect idea for you. He's like, Mercedes. I said, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> you know, he collects those Dub City cars, you know, with the rims. They're about like eight inches long. Oh, yeah. Real collectors. So he's got this, uh, the 500, the AMG. It says it on the back and yeah. stuff, all kitted up with the rims. He's totally enthralled by, by these particular cars, you know? So he brought that to school today. He said, the most important thing is that I bring the coolest toy. <laughs> <laughs> When's his birthday? August 18th. That's what, that's not Leo, is it? Yeah, yes, Leo. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I know it. <laughs> that's just how we are, right? Yep. Oh, Goose, you're Leo, too? Yeah. We got the same birthday. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll drop a bomb on that. <laughs> Come on, where is High Five? I really had stuff to ask him. However, we will roll over their time by talking about people. Let's talk about Nicole Richie. She's going to be on 2020 tonight. Does anybody care? I do. Do you? I love. I think I am Nicole Richie. I love her. You do? Yeah, I love her. You know I won the Nicole Richie bomb. That's right, you did. Well, that's obsessed, right. I'm yes, obsessed. yes. That's, that's, that's Nicole on Nicole. So, <laughs> well, she's going to be on 2020 with Barbara Walters, uh, supposedly tonight. I think it's tonight's episode. I'll be taking my disco nap. I'm going out tonight. I'm in the club. Joe Jackson has a reality show. Oh, Nicole, by the way, what's up with High Five? They're not here yet. Fashionably late. No, well, they can't be fashionably late because now I want to talk to Dave Mays and Benzino about the Source magazine. I don't know. Maybe they got nervous. Well, then I'm about to read the letter from the attorney's office. Should I read it? Or is it because it's going to make well, we them... we can still have a call-in. Yes, well, where's the call-in? Let's take that uh, now. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's take that now. Okay. And then in the meantime, I'll read you this. This is about High Five. It's from <clears throat> Brown and Rosen, attorney at law on Franklin Street in Boston, Massachusetts. 
Dear gentlemen, you are hereby demanded to cease and desist the use of the name High Five on all phonographs, DVDs, and CDs immediately. I represent the owner of the name High Five, Thurston Irby and Marcus Sanders. My clients have recently learned of the illegal use of the name High Five on the Christmas album of 2004, the soon-to-be-released album The Return, and the tour that has yet to be announced. Your actions are in violation of the federal law and state law, and you have devalued the use of the trademark name owned by my client. Blah, 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 so on and so forth. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. So apparently they're illegally using the name High Five. Now I'm expecting a telephone call from one of the members of High Five who apparently is no longer in the group, Thurston Irby. He's the one from the Bronx with like 11 kids. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he's going to be calling in a minute. In the meantime, I'm kind of upset that High Five's in, not in here because I wanted to um, ascertain exactly what member. You know, Art knows all this useless information. There was a member of High Five, allegedly, that was like strung out on heroin, allegedly, who got a solo deal signed to Puffy Bad Boy. Allegedly, Puffy, you know, gave him what he wanted on a regular basis and then dropped him. And then I just used it as a write-off. So, you know, I don't know whether that's, you know, I should be upset that they're not here. They're not here. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, well, we can, we can move on. Kirstie Alley's being accused of getting gastric bypass surgery, stomach stapling, or one of those types of surgeries to lose the weight. See, I don't believe that. I don't believe that's what she got done to lose the weight. Because she wasn't... I mean, she, she was heavy, but she wasn't that heavy, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, she was big, but she wasn't... Okay, she was big. <clears throat> But she's not that thin right now to wonder. Now, you look at Star Jones and you say, okay, now what has she had done? But um, Kirstie's denying it. She's saying, you know, look, there's, there are pictures on the Jenny Craig website. It's taking, and, uh, you know, taking my picture from week to week to week. And Kirstie, excuse me, that's what the zhuzh down is for. They zhuzh down the pounds and then they put it up there. It's just like, <clears throat> I mean, this is playing devil's advocate. I believe she really did lose the weight on Jenny Craig. Maybe I'm maybe I'm naive, you know. But this is why, like, when you go get plastic surgery, just because a surgeon is showing you before and after pictures, doesn't mean they haven't been judged up or down. Doesn't even mean that that surgeon did the particular work. So don't think a surgeon is so great based on the before and after pictures. You really have no basis. Other than, do, have, has their license been taken away? How many lawsuits are filed against them? But, you know, trust everything else. Just don't trust the pictures, because they might not be their work. Wendy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams. All right, everybody. We're still here. I've got one of the original members of High Five on the telephone. Hi, Irby. What's up, Wendy? How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So now, I, you know, High Five is legendary to me as a group. I don't know you all as individuals. Were you an actual member of the group? Yes, ma'am. I'm the only dark skin brother from the Bronx. Okay, you're the one with the 11 kids. 11 kids? No, I have three boys. Oh, okay. <laughs> 11 kids. Oh, my God. How old are your boys? Oh, man, I got a 12-year-old. I got a 5-year-old, and I got a 3-year-old. Mm -hmm. For all the same mother? No, no, no. My oldest is from my other love, which who is what it is. Uh -huh. And my other two is from my previous right now. Yeah. So now, um, how come you're not a member of the new High Five? This is this this is this is what I'm this is what I'm trying, Wendy. For real, this is what I'm trying to figure out. I need to know what the well, you know, I don't want to curse and nothing. I'm a little upset, but I need to know what's going on. I mean, I want to know who who this cat think he is and who the rest of these guys are, and. I, I, actually, I want to talk to them and surprise them. You know, I want you to see their face when I call, you know? Yeah, well, they didn't, even, expecting me. they didn't even show up. Okay, so have you at least seen the CD cover? Do you know any of these guys? I don't know none of them. I know Terrence <sighs> Murphy. Check this out, Winnie. Terrence Murphy, I guess he goes by Murphy. I guess he got braids. He took a place of poo. If it wasn't for me saying he could get in the group, he wouldn't even be there right now. So, in other words, you do know one member of the Today one, High Five. I know, I know one member. I know Tony, of course. And I know one member who was who took the place of somebody. And the other three guys, they just, for what, I, they just, I don't wow. know what's for hire. I don't know what, I don't know what's going on. 
Well, who's behind this new high five? Who's the management? The same I don't pe- know anything. When did wow. my lawyer, my lawyer reached out to Tony Thompson and the, and uh, these guys reached out to him. We never received a call, a call, a phone call back or anything like that. Well, um, they 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 can't do that. You know what I'm saying? We own the name. They can't. They can't. I don't know what they're doing. Well, what happened to the original members of High Five other than you? Have you guys ever thought about getting back together? Yeah, we try. We try to get in contact with Tony so Tony could. You know, so we could all get back together as a group. We didn't want to do it. We tried to do it without him, but the, the vibe just wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? Tony was the lead singer who ended up getting a solo deal with Puffy, right? And messed that up. Well, no, Tony was on heroin? For what I was told, I mean, you know, and, I don't want to put his business out there, but, uh, you know. So it already right is. Now. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is, Wendy. You Listen, know what I'm when, when, when High Five was a group and you guys were all happy and stuff, was he still, you know, I mean, did you notice that he was on drugs then? I didn't, I didn't have no idea. I didn't have no idea. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a, you know, I, I, I mean, God bless the kid, man. But, you know, that's wrong, man. You know, it's wrong. And I, I don't know. Did this, did, I just know that. Did you, you ever hear this? Did you ever hear the story that when he got his solo deal that Puffy allegedly, you know, kept him? Well, you know. Supplied him with drugs? No, I don't think Puffy did anything okay, like good. that. Man. I mean, uh, everybody's their own man. You know, Tony's a grown man. You yeah, know, yeah. even if that happened, if it did happen, yeah. you know, you you're a man. You don't uh, have to do nothing. Please, you say I, no and, and keep it moving. You know, get that money or whatever. Hey, I understand. It. Sometimes the best person to get in business with is somebody who's got a habit. You keep them high, steal their money, and kick them out to the street when they're no good to you. That's the way the world works. Sorry. Uh, yeah, well, that's true. Uh, but at the same, it's time, very though, very when, cruel. I mean, you know. I ain't trying to, you know, you ain't putting none of that stuff in my face, and I'm going to just go ahead and get down with it because, you know, everybody else is getting down with it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You got yeah. your own mind. You can't be doing stuff like that. Yeah. You Shout out saying? to you, Puff, and happy birthday. I'm glad to hear that that's not uh, the case. You know, well, you know. Well, well, yeah, yeah, I know. My thing is, I just wanted to surprise them because you know, they, you know, they come to my my town and try to talk about they the group, and you know, I, I just wanted, I just wanted because they're not they're not expecting me to call. You feel me? Please, a better surprise would have been if you hopped the horse from the Bronx and came down here to Three Park I'm not even Avenue, huh? Connecticut, no, but I swear to goodness, I try to get out there. Damn. I try to get out there. When I called the call, I was stuck in traffic. Damn. I Ooh. try to get out there. I want to be out there. I, I'm try, I try to hook your show up, man, because I know people... This is wrong, Wendy. We, we we grew up together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we, we went and got tattoos together, yeah. you know, and all this high five, high five, high five. And now you're just going to pick up some guys and say you high five. First of all, you had a solo deal. That flopped. I'm not going to say nothing, but it flopped. Mm-hmm. Okay? Then... Now you want to try to come back after you're allegedly, you know, doing the, the heroin thing, the dirty drug or whatever. Mm-hmm. And now you want to just take the name that we help, that I help build. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hello? <laughs> we got disconnected. Hello? 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 I mean, <laughs> I heard enough. Bring Dave Mays in. <laughs> At least the high fives in the back. That's what I was told. They just came in. Hey, Mays. How you doing? How you, doing? you don't look stressed. Mm. You know who you look like? Now I got it. You look like Joaquin, Joaquin um, Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah. This is my new look. Man. Yeah. I let my hair yeah, grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to figure out no why do you look my, different? Let my hair grow. I never had my hair. That's it's right. You school. always had uh, a buzz cut. Uh-huh. And what did you have? A mustache or a beard? Mustache. Look at you. You look real white. What do you plan on doing? Buying Newsweek next? <laughs> I'm just playing. Move up to the microphone. Come on. This man is the founder of the Source magazine. Benzino, still your partner. You all are still thick as thieves. I'm asking. Are we still what? Thick as thieves. Oh, yeah, that's my my brother, man. Go okay. Life. Okay. Yeah. What is happening with the Source magazine? Uh, well, I mean, there's a few <laughs> components to what's happening mm. with the Source magazine. I mean, it first starts, you know, back with a few years ago when Ray and myself made the decision that, you know, we felt like the industry of hip hop, you know, the record industry, music industry of hip hop had gotten so, you know, down a bad, you know, path that it was really damaging to the music and damaging to the long-term value of hip-hop as a culture and mm-hmm. all the great things that hip-hop has done for communities and people and all the great things that it's destined to do. Yeah. So we began to uh, report on some of the corruption and the illegal things that were going on in, in our hip-hop. industry mm-hmm. 
that we felt were wrong. And because we did that, we were targeted by the people who were being exposed. Uh, gotcha. We've only told the truth about what goes on, uh, and we've done it in the best interest of hip-hop, which you know we've tried to do for years in running the source, the voice for the hip-hop community. Um, so a lot of people you know, didn't like that, and then you know, that's created a lot of the brouhaha. And you were then, plagued with um, a, a know, few lawsuits and launched a few of your own. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we got sued by Eminem, you know, as a tactic to try to financially hurt us and to try to quiet us from exposing the truth about him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, basically to try to shut down our freedom of speech. He lost and pulled mm -hmm. his lawsuit out. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and basically, mm -hmm. you know, we just uh, won another battle uh, a couple of days ago in court with this bank that we're in business with, and you know, they were trying some move to try to, uh, which is what some of the scuttlebutt the t last t few days was about um you know basically there's a, a f back in 99 we took a big loan to try to make an internet investment right okay. and they said that you were defaulting on the loan right because i read that a few right. so we're having weeks. a we're having a dispute now that stems back from a, 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 a failed internet investment. Back in 99, we made a big effort to try to expand the source through mm -hmm. the internet. Right. And we had our TV shows and our magazines. Right. We had Source Sports mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at that time, mm -hmm. I made a you know mistake where I gambled way too much money of my own money, right. borrowed money, and lost it all on the internet. Are you, you know, broke? Which, which a lot of people know I'm not. Personally, are you okay? I'm all right. I'm chilling. You know? Goose has a loan for you if you need something. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Up. Go ahead, Mace. You know, I got something for you, too. You know? Oh, all Let right. Me know. Let me know. What you got? What you but, got? <laughs> but, um, no. Nah, so that's that's what the, the bank situation is. You know, and then it's been, you know, the papers and people wanted to so, try to blow that up into something. But the bank thing. Mm -hmm. It's working out in your favor. Uh, the first round, at <coughs> definitively, you know, it looks like it's working out. In what our is your all's legal team looking like? Is it is it black, white, black, white? Is it ten people deep, five <laughs> men, five women? Uh, it's, it's different. I got a, I got a host of different uh, attorneys working yeah. with me. Uh, uh -huh. I have Ernest Booker who just came on board with me and his partner Bruce Regan Streich who just filed the BET lawsuit. That's for what. Us. It, let's talk about this. Um, I have Matt Cuomo and David Finkler. I can't leave them out. Okay. Um, who are handling the uh, bank situation? Right. right now for me. Now, the BET situation, so you all had to deal with BET to run the Source Hip Hop Music Awards. Absolutely. And they pulled out? Yeah, they... Because uh, you they, ended up airing on UPN. No, no, UPN was in the past. We started on UPN back in 99. Where'd you we, air? We've been at UPN, the la I mean, at BET the last couple of years. We've been on BET last year and the year before. So and they, had, they had a contract to televise it a third time okay, this year. Okay, gotcha. Um... And unfortunately, you know, certain executives in that company who were managing the uh, business with the source, uh -huh. you know, I think that they were personally uh, very upset about certain things that happened last year, even though the show was a big success, uh -huh. sixth six highest rated show ever in okay. BET's history. BET made millions of dollars from advertising off of it. So at the end of the day, you should be happy. You have a great show, makes money, and people should be able to move on. Right. But, you know, again, this is sort of the problem in our industry to a degree. You know, you got people that just, you know, allow their personal feelings to get too involved. And, you know, because we're young a lot of times, I think that makes it worse because, you know, people don't look at me, for an example, as an owner, a CEO of a company. They might just, hey, He's just like me. That's my man. And mm, they, get, you know, they get, you know, they us. might get jealous or they might get mad. They don't like degree. what me and Ray represent. Gotcha. And they, you know, <laughs> so these guys were like really upset about certain things that happened behind the scenes yes. in making a profit for everybody last year. But yes. at the end of the day, it worked. Coming into this year, they still were harboring those feelings. I hired uh, uh, Leonard Muhammad, who's uh, Minister Farrakhan's son-in-law, mm. one of the uh, chief people in the nation, uh, to represent us <coughs> in negotiating with BET this mm -hmm. year, to remove myself from mm -hmm. the process mm -hmm. and put a credible person in there to handle the business. And, I mean, he, you know, constantly was reporting back to me how, you know, this guy, you know, who was the CFO of BET, was, like, fixated with, you know, why should we do this for Dave and Dave this and Dave that and you know very personal and ultimately mm -hmm. uh, the guy dragged things out and then kind of left a lot of people in BET in the dark as to what was really going on gotcha. and they made a mistake because they have a contract and uh, it's binding right. and they breached it so and they're gonna they're gonna pay you know they're gonna pay a lot of money to to get out of this thing uh, in the end 
it, you know, and ultimately, it's it's what the if they people that's pay? suffering right now. We're going to be bringing the awards back, hopefully, in the new year. We're looking at a January, February situation. And that's right around the corner. Else. Okay, yeah. so you, you want to yeah, move it someplace working, else. We're working on that right now. There's no working this out with BET. Um, not at this point, I haven't got the Too call many. yet, okay. but, you know, we'll see. I would have liked to have avoided it. Uh -huh. You know, I made calls to Bob and to uh, Deborah Lee there yeah. and, you know, left messages to please intervene and have a conversation before this thing got out of hand because I, they gave us no choice right. but to have to file this action and it's going to bring a lot of you know unfortunately some of the dirty laundry of BET and how they operate and the people up there mm. and you know at the end of the it's day they don't, they, don't, they don't respect hip hop and they don't respect the streets okay even mm. you can see in the type of programming on mm. that network mm. their ratings are declining with mm. young people mm. which is why they needed the source mm. which brought young people's mm. ratings and credibility in hip hop this but the people that run there don't really respect hip hop and don't respect the streets they, they want to exploit it and make money off it but they really look down on it you know and and that's been a big part of our issue too through all these it's things the is line, that if you want to make money off of hip hop like I feel you need to respect it and right. I don't like when people are trying to exploit it and they don't respect it and they don't you know it's respect the community and the streets and the people that create hip hop and the struggle that created hip hop okay I just see a new copy of The Source oh, Latino. Oh, yeah. This is I was the brand new issue coming out next, next month, uh, December the 13th on and newsstands. I wasn't sure whether I was for it or not because I didn't think uh, that there was going to be enough content. Oh, but this man. is like as thick as a damn phone book. Well, one of the things we did, flip it over, we did the first bilingual, fully bilingual magazine. One Ew, side English, one mira. side Spanish. Yeah, so now you Como can read it. Yeah, yeah, you, no matter what, you can read it. Because yeah. Latin hip hop is becoming popular to everybody. I mean, yeah. it, you know, it's it's a movement and it's a culture that's you know going to be around a long uh, time. And uh, you know, so I think the audience in the United States uh, is broader than million. just you know people that speak oh, Spanish. But we definitely want to make it as authentic <laughs> as possible. So we have the Spanish side. We have heavy distribution, you know, in Puerto Rico, Mexico, and throughout so the United States. So not only so is the Source magazine, the Source franchise still standing, but you're standing strong. We just did a Source Japan deal about a month huh. ago. We signed a license oh, to I produce Source Thomas. Japan. Absolutely. Oh, I have the in the new year, the first Source <laughs> Japan magazine will be coming out and uh so yeah so we we try so, to keep moving and growing and we're still dealing with our battles and you know well people then, can go into court and they can <laughs> say anything in a lawsuit yeah. that they want and the papers can take what they print in a lawsuit and make it seem like that's the truth but it's just one side that somebody put in a lawsuit now ultimately those issues get worked out and now, resolved through the process of, of the you, courts you're satisfied with your staff there at the source at this particular point or are you still shuffling people oh, I around got, no i got a great staff right now Okay. Shout out to uh, everybody from uh, my man Bum, uh, my we, man we Mike Feinberg, I just my want, man I just son, to know if Ryan. Happy. Yeah, everybody. We got okay. a great squad up there. So there's no, um, there's no hope for Steve Stout to plunk down $13 million and become a part. Because <laughs> he sent me a little note. Oh, really? Reportedly. Yeah. He wants Steve, to buy the source. Steve is a funny guy. I mean, again, he's one of the type of people that we've been critical of. Again, this mm -hmm. is people that, you know, only are, are, are interested in money and only interested in themselves. I understand. And it's cool to make money and be about making money. And that is one of the examples that the hip-hop generation or hip-hop has set entrepreneurialism and making money. But there's a way to make money and still, you know, treat people right and have respect for people and not burn bridges and you know nobody likes that guy like he has no friends nowhere because I like he's him. well a lot of people don't like this guy the streets don't like this, this guy the guy has you know a lot of security wherever he goes because oh. you know he's burned a lot of bridges done a lot of people dirty oh. and uh in my opinion he's somebody that's out there that's again hurting things because he's out there misleading corporate America to, to to his particular interpretation of what he wants them to think hip hop is and and he's disconnected from it so you know he's mad because wow. we exposed him in the magazine a couple you know a year or so ago and you know we're, we're exposing what we feel again are people whose personal agendas mm. are ruining the hip hop culture mm. ruining the industry so and the magazine is standing strong so you've got many more years of exposing uh, uh, looking for many more I've been here 17 years uh, and I plan to be another 17 on. years and legally legally it's impossible for Steve Stout to buy unless he comes and buys it from me and Ray so yeah I haven't got the phone call but we own 
the majority, the vast majority of the equity in the company. Yeah, well, I so was it's not ask legally you, possible. Hold to, on, affiliates. To I know you're waiting, you, but this is Mays, and the source is legendary, and I need to ask a couple of more questions. So just hold on. The affiliates are toe tapping right now. Okay. We're ready to go on a break. But look. Have people tried to become divisive in the relationship with you and Benzino? Because it seems to me that if you divide mm -hmm. you all, then perhaps you can... I mean, people have tried that for years, but it's mm -hmm. just never going to happen. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the beauty of, you know, partnership, too. That's another thing that we feel. We set an example. We're not just an individual, you know, out here doing it. We're partners. Yeah. And, you know, and we've been that way for 20 years. Yeah. Nobody's going to break, you know, separate us. We complement each other, yeah. you know, well. We understand each other's strengths. We respect each other. Gotcha. And we work as, as, as a team and as a partnership. Well, I will. I wish you well, everybody. Dave Mays, the owner, one of the owners. Uh, shout out to you, Benzino. Always nice. I wish I could look at you, but you're not here, so <laughs> I'll think about you. Dave <laughs> Mays and Benzino, low. they own The Source magazine. The Source is still standing. You're still exposing. Uh, keep doing what's right. Just keep putting the truth out there. You know, keep doing what's right for the people. When you when you have a magazine or a media company, even radio, your job is to serve your listeners, yes. the people. It's not to serve the people that spend the most money with you and say what they want you to say or don't want you to say. Ultimately, yeah, the advertisers have an influence. Of course they do. Right. But to, to really build a credible media company, a magazine, the source, anything else, it's built off of building a trust with your constituents, your readers that you're yeah. serving. If they trust you and believe you're telling the truth, everything else will come into play. And All we've right. always put them first. Even if it means huge companies are going to pull millions of dollars of advertising out of our company, send M&M okay, and people Dave. around to say bad things about you, we're still going to okay, put Dave. the truth out to the people. We love your magazine. I don't mm -hmm. know who talks more, you or Don King or Russell Simmons. Oh, boy, don't put me in that category. I, yes, you, you all, you all, but you're legendary for your talk. You, you've always been the same way when you come up. You just talk, talk, talk. The problem is now is because, well, not a problem, really, because we're syndicated, so the affiliates are waiting to go in, and, and we're, we're overstepping our boundaries. I'm sorry, affiliates. Well, affiliates, though, this is Maze, and, and most of the stations that I'm on, as a matter of fact, all of them except for BLS in New York are number one for hip-hop and R&B in their, in, their, uh, in their cities. So, therefore, you're the Bible to the listeners. So, listeners, you must understand that the source is around writing and exposing, and we're here for you. We didn't give ourselves that name, the Bible. That was given to us through our efforts and through what we proved over the years. We've been doing this before again. all these people was here. <laughs> Dave, so. that means hasta la bye bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you, Dave. Oh, Source really Magazine, love to you all. All, all right. right, we'll be back, everybody. It's windy, man. I drove yesterday to get you, but that book is fire. <laughs> yes, honey, you did it again, honey. You did it again. The Wendy Williams Experience. It's just about that time of year. Time for another party. A party with a purpose. Last year, Fantasia, John Legend, Keith Sweat, and Brian McKnight sold out weeks before the event, causing many to be left in the cold. Don't let that happen to you. This year will be even bigger and better. We'll begin with a full holiday buffet. Then Chuck Chillout gets the party started, started with your favorite WBLS hey. personalities. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey. Okay, everybody. Hi, it's me, Wendy Williams. My name is Bob. This is Champagne. Yes, Kings and Queens is the original rude boy, David Levy, rocking you and popping you. Then get ready when Jaheim hits the stage. Yo, what's up? It's your boy, Jaheim. It's going to be a party, y'all. Along with Jamie. F hold up, hold up. You can't say that just yet. What, what you want to Just uh, let them know when and where it's going to be. They already know the entertainment's going to be bang. Mark your calendar for Saturday night, December 17th. It all goes down to the Broadway Ballroom of the Marriott Marquis Midtown. Oh, you doing it like that, That's huh? right. The Marriott. Tickets available now at all ticket master locations. Proceeds to benefit Safe Horizons and Day One. Putting an end to domestic violence. It's a party with a purpose. From 107.5 WBLS. Hey, this is your man Steve Harvey in the mornings. If you call me right now, you can get your share of $107,000. We just giving you a thousand, though. But that's still a lot of money. We call it number 10 at 212-545-1075. $1,000 right here from 107.5 WBLS.
All right, you're calling number one, BLS, you're calling number two. You're calling number three, you're calling number four, BLS, you're calling number five. You're calling number six, you're calling number seven, WBLS, you're calling number eight. By the way, this hour of the show is being brought to you by MasterCard. BLS, you're calling number nine, BLS, you're calling number ten. Hello? Congratulations. Hello? Yes, it's Wendy. Hi. Hi. Claudette, how are you? Hi, Claudette, you're calling number ten. Oh, my you just God, picked am up I really? $1,000. Thank you so much. In our $1,000. Uh, excuse me, in our $107,000 cash guarantee. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited. You listen all day, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah, we do it at 7.15 in the morning with Steve Harvey, again at 12.15 with Mark Jordan, and then again at 5.25 with me. So you got the tail end of uh, a good thing today. Thank you so much. All right, Claudette. Hey, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Wanta. All right, well, let everybody know your radio station. WBLS. All right, hold on, Claudette. We're going to take all your information behind the scenes. Everybody, if you want to win like Claudette, you make sure that you're here 715 on Monday morning with the Steve Harvey Morning Show, and they've got your next chance to win. Dave Mays talked right through all the commercials and then came up with the Reverend Run Show. And I haven't seen this particular episode, Dave. You're such a good talker. I mean, you, you're really... So, so I haven't seen... See, I wait until the weekends and I catch all the reruns right, right. of that. So Russell is on the show with a group that happens to be white that is going to be the next big thing? Yeah. Well, Run's on the show, and yeah, he brings in these three white kids. I mean, they look crazy, and they're like, oh, this is the greatest, biggest group ever. You know, these are going to be the biggest next rap phenomenon. I mean, it's, it's good, preposterous. Right? Wow. And, oh, Russell loves them. We got to sign them. We're going to make them huge. And I mean, it's just... It's just sad, you know, to see where things are going. What? And that's why we're fighting so hard. People want to know, why won't they stop? Why won't they stop? Because it's being lost. It's being taken from us. And it's going farther, you know, away every second. And so we're grasping fighting to to keep it you know hip-hop is 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 a child of, of of our community of our struggles of our culture and we should have a, a fair say in ownership of it economically culturally you know and we don't have that anymore it's in the hands of a couple very small you know a few hands at these huge companies that are determining what music gets out what music doesn't get out what music gets on the radio what music gets into stores it's all being controlled by a couple people at the top of these companies now. And, and then you have people like Steve Stout, like Russell, people who would take a check and work. You know, they did it. They, you know, sold his company, oh. whatever. Now they take checks. They work and implement, you know, the agendas of these people. And they think that's okay that they should just, you know, because they're making money off of it. That Russell Simmons will get sent out as a mouthpiece by Jimmy Iovine when the Eminem thing happened. He, You know, Jimmy writes a script for Eminem, for Russell to go out and say. Russell goes out and says it to try to make it seem like it's something that it's not. And it's just, it's sad. And then you see them actually now on the show, like, hey, we got this great new group of white guys, and they're going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread to take over hip-hop. I mean, it's 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 disgusting. So it's disgusting. And, and so all along the agenda, I guess, of these people, as you said several times, but I think people are, are getting it. The more they hear you talk, they're trying to smoke the source out so that the source doesn't exist, so that you can't write and expose we, the truth as you see got it. Eight million readers, okay, and we're independently owned. Ray and I own it, and we can do and say what we want. So they, yeah, they want to put us under the bus, you know, so that they can get double XL and you know back them as they been doing pumping dollars in there that they can control it's simple that's all they're doing that's why they're spreading all this negative stuff anytime anything happens they'll make a big deal out of it to try to make us uh look bad have you ever been personally threatened no nah, nobody's gonna personally threaten me uh, you know that's again these guys they don't they're not threatening nobody they're harmless steve stout these people are harmless people that's the thing they they're the ones with 30 securities wherever they go like i i, I have my security off of who I am because I've built relationships and, you know, people, you know, respect me for, for being a man of my word yeah. and for, you know, being about helping people and looking out for people, you know, while I'm trying to build something that I can and others can benefit from. Thanks for coming in. You're welcome. I wish you well. Thank you. I keep reading. All right, pick up the new issue out there right now. We got <laughs> Hip Hop Behind Bars Part 2 coming out in a week. We got the Jew Not issue out right now. Oh, wow. It's but uh, Hip Hop Behind Bars yeah, Part yeah, 2 yeah. is coming next. Yeah. All right, The Source. Yeah. 2006 is coming. Yeah. Big things coming on. Yeah. You got the new Source, uh, the Source Latino and Source Japan, and you're sourcing it out. Just when they thought you were down and out, trying to silence you. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Not fight yet. the fight. Not yet. Kids. All right, Mace. Hi.
Thank you very I much. I feel for as though me. I've got to make sure that you get up and leave before you say another word and keep the talk going. Go, go, get out. <laughs> yeah, you, kick somebody out. You, you know what? You know what? It's it's the new hairstyle and the no mustache. I swear you look like Joaquin. Jo- Joaquin. Am I saying it correct? Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin, Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. You do look like him. The ladies must love that. You notice I didn't talk about your love life. I normally do. I'll get you next time. (laughs) Bonus hour coming up at the top of the hour on WBLS. Okay, there's a lot of action going on. Open the door to the new high five. The group founder, Tony Thompson, is in the room. Murph is in the room. Jay Smooth, Josh Sean, and Dion. Goose, flip your microphone around. Oh, they came with flowers, as if that's going to soften my blood. <laughs> Give me the sand flowers. Hey, hey Tony. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? I never really knew you guys as solo artists. And I don't know you. I, Tony, you're the only original member. And Murph. And, me, and, Murph. and Murph. Yes. Absolutely. Which one was strung out? Both of you don't look. Both of you look fine. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I Which mean, one was strung out? A lot of that was rumors. Look, I was an ex offender. Let's talk for real. We're which one, which one of you? Okay, which one of you had a mild um, heroin situation? Neither one of us. Drugs? Never. 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 Which one of you got the solo deal with Puffy? I had the solo deal with Puffy. Okay, so you're the one Damn. I'm talking to. Yeah, and the reason, and the reason we, me and Puff uh, split it ways, at that time I okay. wanted to do my own label, and Puff wasn't ready for me to do that, so... Eventually, we, we parted ways, but we still friends. You okay. know. Big ups to Puff. Happy birthday, Puff. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Birthday, it's nice to hear that because Art, Life of the Party, who's uh, actually on a cruise right now, mm-hmm. lucky him, um, he was the one who said, listen, when they come in, you know, right. don't forget. And I said, I got gotcha. you. Okay. You know. <laughs> so, how you What doing? you looking for, Wendy? Track marks. Pull it up. <laughs> you want to see? None, baby. None, none, none. I'm blinging a little bit. No, all right. <laughs> all right. All so right. the new high five. Hi, fellas. How what's are up? You? What's up? What is the average age in this group? I put it like you know. What I'm We're in our twenties. We're in our twenties. Twenty-seven. Mm, hard living. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. So there's five of you. Yeah. yeah. And, there, and there's beef about the name of the group. Are you guys about to get your behind suit off? I had a lawyer no. from Boston call behind the scenes. Plus, send a note, and then uh, there, who's that on the telephone? There's the phone ringing. We can't deal with that right now. Are you guys about to get sued? You can't use the name. The um, we uh, there's there's a uh, some of the older members like trying to sue, but I don't think that would happen. Uh, I mean, we've we've heard that Trest, Treston um, Treston was called earlier. You yeah, heard we heard about that, and and um, to be honest with you, he's not even an original member of the group. Um, he came in later on in the situation, and the guy that was um, a original member was Toriano Easley, who got in trouble, uh, had got in some trouble at the time, and Treston came trouble? and took his place. Um, it was it was um he it was murder actually it was self defense it was self defense <laughs> what is yeah. he in jail no he's out now it was out how now. long was he in jail for about a couple of years what year was this it was this was it was like I've been gossiping since nineteen it was an accident yes, it, oh. him and a guy tussled over a gun well tussled they got into a fight and tussled over a gun and end up the guy the end up what the guy got shot <clears> that <throat> that was um, tussling with him. So he ended up going to jail, but he's out. For he's having out right a, now. a weapon. So at that time, we had auditions, and oh, Tristan came on. So he that. never was an original member that owned any rights okay, to any okay, any of the okay. High Five names. So now you're saying basically is that he's bitter because he's not standing in here right now. Exactly. Yeah, and Wendy, let me let me let, let me say this. In '95, okay, I was up here. Mm. And we tried to put the group together without Tony. Okay. So I don't know why he's beefing. You know, we tried to put the group together without Tony because Tony was working with Puffy at the time. Okay. And, you know, the group was a bitter about him working with, you know, Puffy. So we decided that, you know, we would try to, you know, go uh, go ahead and move forward, you know, without without uh, Tony. Yeah, I mean, you can put him on the phone, but make sure that we get the seven second delay on because he's probably going to start cursing. So now, where'd you pick up? The, where'd you, where are you three fellas from? Oh, I'm so confused. You confused? Oh yes. Hello. Uh, Hel- no. Oh gosh, put headphones on. Damn, they can't hear. Enters. There's three of you, and everybody's standing there. Yeah. Nobody yo, has yo, the yo, yo, Wait, yo. hold on, Kirby. Nobody can hear you because the girls are sitting there so thoroughly entertained. <laughs> yo, I'm from I'm from Monroe, Louisiana. <laughs> okay. Hello? All right. Gonna... Now, uh, who is he talking to? Hello, this is Trust. What's up? Intr- Yo, what's up, Trust? This is Murph. Yeah, Murphy, what's up, man? What's good? 
What's happening, man? I mean, you tell me what's, what, what, I mean, what's going on, you, man. You got a group together. You, and, give Tony some headphones. I want to know what's going on, man. Trust. I, don't know, I, wasn't a, I wasn't an original member. I don't got rights. I mean, Tony, do you remember the papers that we signed to? Do you remember the papers that we signed But you they say mean, you replaced the, the man who committed murder. The, the lawyer. No, actually, actually, the lawyer, the only paperwork is there. All the, you, you got the paperwork. They faxed the paperwork to you. My name is on that. Tony forgot, evidently, papers that we signed when we was younger. Tony. Know, we talk about, mm. I don't have no rights. I have a lot of rights. Marcus Sanders, who's another rich. Who's he a has rich no member, right. He's Trust down me. with the program, too. He tried to call your show, but y'all didn't, y'all didn't pick up the phone. He Kirby, is there, so, is there a lawsuit? Uh, am I calling the right name? And Wendy, let me tell you this. <laughs> He, he want to he, he talk. He want to talk to you, right? He want to talk to you too. Marcus Allen want to talk to you too. And Donnie D is not an original member of no group. Absolutely. Tony came to, Tony came to when us is your Wall's new CD Tony coming out? When is when is your Wall's CD coming out? The CD the CD the CD is out of stores right now. Okay. And what's it called? It's called the return. Okay. It's called the return. Okay. And even been, back then, when High Five first how, how many weeks has it been out? So we know it's it's only been out a week. Okay. It's only been and, out a week. and what's your what's your um a label? It's called In Depth Entertainment, that I, a label that I started. Bring him back up a little, Goose. Come on. In Depth Entertainment. In, in Depth Entertainment. So yes. this is a this is a you effort. Yes. Uh, I mean, you, I put my you, own, by himself. It's always been about him. By himself. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Hey, <laughs> hey let, me, let, me tell, let me tell you one thing, Wendy. Back in the day, when, when you know, when, 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 I, when, I, when I was on, recording the on. albums, yes. I was doing all the background vocals. Okay. I was doing all, I no vocals, I was doing all the lead. He, no. did, he did a couple of talking Wait, parts. Hey, Donnie, you don't have nothing to do with this, Don. And, and if you don't believe me. You know, yo, trust. I called you. I called you and talked to you about the situation, God, trust. I called you and tried to put you down with the situation, and you told me you didn't want to be a part of it. You wouldn't even be there, man. I don't want to be part of it. You didn't. You did not put me in the group, trust. And to, to me and Tony grew up. We were childhood friends. I want to say no. It's majority rules. Look at the contract. Look at the Tell him to sing. Right, so sing. Tell him to sing, sing something. something. Okay, okay. Then you guys be quiet. We're going to bring him back up. I'm going to ask him to sing. But you three right there, okay. you're standing here like, what the hell? We're ready to quit now. Because how, you know. Never. 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 Three guys, I don't got no beef with none of you guys. Trust him? You know? I don't know. Um, trust him? They said I was like, trust him. Stop fighting. Trust him? I'm not fighting, sweetie. I'm not fighting. Okay. Trust him? Trust him? Remember the song I like? Hit it. Go ahead, say it. I like the way. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's what we had. We, I mean, that's what we said with the background. Right, the particular one. I didn't even see that. So, I mean, and if you I don't mean, believe me, uh, call Jive Records and ask, ask uh, Cl uh, Clive Calder and ask Ben <laughs> Tony, 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 Tony pretty much recorded every album. Tony recorded the album. All right, trust and hold on a moment. Tony, you sing. Hello? All summer long, we've been together, huh, I'm and I've never I'm felt about. so good. That was my part. That was Tony's Keep going. Keep going. Hey, hey, fellas, let's let's kick it. Let's go. One, go. Two, three, go. As we make love, let me hear you call my name, babe. Say my name. Here in this bed, you know I don't be playing games, babe. What you gotta say, trust me? I don't hey, play. Hey, hey, the thing if is, the thing I'm is. on top, keep going till you make me the, the, the stop. Is, make me stop Damn. doing to you <laughs> everything that you want me to. The bridge, fellas, it's, it's so hot. hot. That boom, boom, boom. I could stay here all night. I'm trusting and shutting it down. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not, not going to hold the motor, you know. Ooh. High five. The new CD yeah, is in stores. Yeah, this is a real Tyra high five. Thank you so much for it calling. It is a real high five. All right, baby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. Love you for listening. Have a wonderful weekend. Have fun. It is what it is, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey. I love you. See you later. What's up, Dave? Good night. Program complete. <laughs> Damn it. Damn you. <laughs> Damn you, it is what it is. The bonus hour is up next. Uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. Oh, my Lord.
Wendy Williams Show. 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 Wendy Williams Show.
I fashion, I fashion it to my head. I hold, strap it to my head with a with a, uh, a headband, like an NBA, you know, headband. And I'm talking. And, oh gosh, see what happened? What happened? All right. Hello, hi. It's Wendy. You're on the radio. <laughs> Hello? Oh, yes. Hi. Yes, hi. Who am I speaking with? Wendy. Hey, Wendy. I was wondering if you uh, heard what Stephen A. Smith said about you today. Oh, boy. What did he say? One person called up and said that uh, he was the king of sports media like Wendy's the queen of uh, radio. Mm -hmm. And he said, never mention your name and his name in the same sentence. Because you're trash and all you used to talk about is people's sex lives. Well, then, I have one thing to say then to you, Stephen A. Smith. Silence. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? And I don't know anything. I'm just saying that's just a funny response. I've never even met this man in my life. Oh, well. You think a fellow black, you know, no, not uh, radio personality would have respect for another black personality? No, but. plenty of us don't have respect for each other. All right, Wendy. All right. Thank you, sir, for being uh, for informing me of that. I mean, some of us have respect for each other, and I guess some of us don't. Steven's doing well, and I'm doing well, and we're both here, and, and great. I have, uh, you know, I like Jones. I'll be at her party tonight. That is my peer in the game. I like, you know. Hi, Wendy. Hello. I, I like, I love Star. I love, I love uh, Steve Harvey. A uh, shout out to you, Flex. Shout out Hello. to the Red Alert and Mr. C. DJ, not, yeah, I mean, you know what? Do you, hey, Angie. And we're Hi, on hello. at the same time. Hello. Hello. Maybe Stephen Smith has something to hide. Let's investigate. Interns, get on it. <laughs> okay. Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi, Wendy. Um, I'm in traffic. So I'm trying to be legal. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, but I'm talking on a speaker. Okay. So if I'm talking like loud. No, you're fine. Okay. I have a quick question. I heard you talking to um a guy earlier, and he was you told him that if. Like, his friend called about um, one of his friends, like, had a wife, and she didn't want the other person's kid in her house or whatever. Right. The the man. So, I have a question. Okay, okay. What happened with me? I'm married or whatever, and me and my son, we, I mean, me and my husband, we have a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. But I found out that he had another kid, but after we was married for, like, two years already. Mm hmm And then I wanted to leave, but then I was like, well, I can't get mad because it happened before me. Mm-hmm. And, but why didn't he tell you about this child before? Huh? Why didn't he tell you about this child before marrying you? He he claimed that he didn't know. Okay, like he's he, lying. Okay, so he lied he to you. That, that that was a big lie. So in your case, what's your what's your question? Are you just calling to inform me? Well, no, I'm well. It's drama, like all oh, like drama in my life anyway. Like right now, mm -hmm. so I will call you with like more. But it's like, like, what do I, like, I was just thinking because you told him, well, you never, you have to think about that when you date somebody that have a kid. And but I you didn't know, so then. I would never talk to somebody that had a kid already. There, yeah, see, you didn't and know. I mama drama, but now I don't have a choice because I'm already married. And it's like. But you didn't know because it was, there were, so that you'd be the exception to the rule if all of a sudden this child's mother, the child who popped up out of nowhere, if right. that if that mother decided that she no longer wanted to, you know, be the primary caretaker of that child and she wants him to be it, you'd have every right to sue him for divorce. Because you married him under deception. He had a child. I'm sure he knew about the child. He lied to you about it, married you, and now he expects you to em embrace, you know, a child. He, I mean, he lied. Don't take it out on the kid, but take it out on him. He lied. So you right, and I don't take it out on the kid. I look at the kid like he didn't ask to be here. He just have two stupid parents well, or whatever. It, well, as long as the kid can go home to, right. to his mother. Right. But after you said that, like, one day you have to think about taking care of him. I ain't trying to take care of him. I want my own child, and I can't have another one because we found out about his mistake, and now I can't have one, another one. Why like, can't you have another one? Huh? Why can't you have another child? I don't understand. He child support, and he don't want another one because he's, like, it's too expensive or whatever. But that's not my fault. Like, why should I suffer? So then, then enjoy your marriage. Hope that it lasts forever. But in, in your mind, be mindful of the fact that... One day this could all blow up into a divorce and, and also be mindful of what you will and won't put up with regarding this other child. And I guess what you wouldn't put up with is this child moving into your house. So I'm always going to have to be unhappy because I, I can't have another one because he have two and I have one. Well, like, you, could, you could always be happy with the one that you have and realize there are a lot of women who can't even have that one. That's true. Okay. Have a good day.
Okay. Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello. Oh. Hello. Hi, it's Wendy. Hello. Hi. Hi, Wendy. How are you? I'm good. Good. Just love your show. Thank and you. I just wanted to call in because I want to give a shout out to my husband because today's our 16th wedding anniversary. Wow, you made it this long. Yes, we did. Did you hear Paulette and Denzel are getting a divorce? I can't believe that. That's the word. Ugh. Well, you know what? We're best friends, so I, good. I don't think we're ever going that route. Good. Good for you. How many kids you guys got? We have four boys. Wow. 12 and down. Good for you. So what are you guys doing tonight? Anything special? Turn your radio um, down. We're going to Atlantic City. Oh, good. Nice. You, and you, and who's taking care of the kids? Um, a very good friend of ours. Good. Good. You staying there all weekend? Yeah. Good for you. Have fun. How's, the, how's you. the sex after 16 years? What was that? How's the sex? Oh, it's always good. Good. You, do you have sex like three times a week? Two times a At week? Least. One? We're still going strong. Good. Good college. Very good. Nice. Yeah. Well, you take care, and, and, and here's the 16 more. Thank you. Bye-bye. I love you. Love you, too. Hello, hi, it's Wendy. You're on the radio. Hey, Wendy, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm good. Listen, I'm a fan of yours and a fan of Stephen A. Smith. And uh, the guy that called about two callers ago, mm -hmm. he misrepresented what Steve said. Okay. To see, don't try to get me in a fight with somebody I don't even know. Go. Yeah, what Steve said was, he told the, the caller, he said, don't mention my name in the same breath as Wendy. Well, he's not sound a, accurate. So I t he said, I talk about sports, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> she talks about people's personal lives and their sex lives. Right. No disrespect to Wendy, mm -hmm. but I don't talk about that, and just don't mention my name in the same breath. Now, I don't think he should have said it like that, but I don't think he meant anything negative towards you. Oh, Okay. All right, sweetie, enjoy yourself at um, Tasha's party. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Take care, sir. Have a good weekend. All right. All right um, interns, you can call off your search. They're over there feverishly on the Internet, just working the buttons. Hello? Hi, Wendy. Hi. Fine, thanks. How are you? Fine. Wendy, I sent you an email the other day. Well, I sent it to Nicole, and I wanted to know if you heard about the man from Perth Amboy who sodomized um, the dog. Yeah, we talked about it. As a matter of fact, right here on the bonus hour. Oh, man, I missed it. Well, um, so what did you think about it? I mean, I missed the whole thing. I'm sorry. Did you know about it before I sent the email? Uh, yeah, I read the newspaper. Uh, the Star Ledger actually uh, wrote, wrote uh, did that article. They okay. did the article when he did it once, and then and I covered it that time, and then he went back to have sex went, with the same dog. Yeah, and I thought for um, violating restraining order. Yes. Why are we talking about this? Is this your father, brother, or somebody no, you no, hate? No. Oh, okay. No, I just read it in the paper, and okay. I just thought, you know, it wasn't publicized because of the animal cruelty side of it, so it wasn't really publicized, but they put his name, Jose Rivera, and I'm putting you out there from Perth and Boy, who has okay. two children, and, um, and a wife who left him after Freeze. Freeze. But, um, yeah, Let's you know, go in. Uh-huh. Oh, ah! Okay. Who is Jose to you? One of your ba is he your deadbeat da baby's daddy? No, no, I was just a concerned uh, reader there, and I just wanted to make sure that Wendy Williams was on top of this new story. But that was pretty disgusting. Is he I your mean, neighbor? They caught him again. I mean, how could you go back to the same dog? He went back. I mean, he was as opposed to going to a different dog. <laughs> 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 you gotta wait around a block and try a different dog. I mean, you came back in the back. Behind her dog again, and that's how he got arrested for violating the restraining order. Yeah. That was pretty disgusting. But um, are you sure you don't know him? Uh, no. <laughs> where, where are you from? I'm from Jersey City. I know you, Wendy. Okay. I know you. I was. I, I was. A, I'm very. Um. I'm a listener since you was back at Wendy's. I mean Wendy's when you was doing an open mic. Wendy's. Oh my gosh, we go way back. I am a, a very dedicated wow. listener. Wow. Been, uh, from the other station, and if you go to another station, which I hope that you never do, I'll be right there with you, Wendy. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much, and I hope your son, I mean, tell your son and your family or whatever. I said hi, and I wish you happy holidays. Thank you. You too. Thanks, Wendy. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow, that's my first happy holiday. What's today, November 4th? Mm -hmm. Are we saying happy holidays already? I know, QVC, see, I'm not watching any QVC HSN until, like, January 15th, because now everything is about Christmas ornaments and, and that happy holidays mess. And they don't, you know, not enough of the usual stuff. Unless they have, like, you know, Suzanne Summer comes on and I like to watch, and Victoria Weck comes on with her jewelry and whatnot. 
Ugh, gosh. So then you go on the web. You get the other stuff there. Who goes on the web? Everybody. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I know one thing. I need to get me one of these galaxy dresses. Man, I saw a special on the... Ladies, have you heard about the galaxy dress? Okay, what you need to do then is go out and get the new Us Weekly magazine and turn to page four and five. They've got a lineup of six celebrity women. Rachel Weiss, Claire Danes, Kira uh, Keira Knightley, Nicole Kidman, Naomi Watts, Maria Bello. Actually, <clears throat> Kira's wearing the same dress that I've seen Demi Moore wear. This <clears throat> galaxy dress. As a matter of fact, I think I saw it last night on the UPN 9 News. Or Channel 7. I was too late for UPN they're $1,500, but apparently they act as like a full body girdle, but they're made of great material designed by, <clears throat> excuse me, somebody in England. Cameron Diaz loves them. They hold all your fat and all of your like body imperfections in. And they're $1,500, but supposedly worth it. Bergdorf Goodman has been sold out of this galaxy dress. And unfortunately, in Us Weekly, they don't even give a website where to go to get this. Is Nicole still in the office? Nicole, I'll take it in any color. Even though some of them are really ugly. This one Maria Bello has one. It's really gross. So is the Rachel Weiss one. They hold in all your fat, though, and they come down below your knees. It's like a full body girdle. Let me pass it around to the Girl Fridays. Let's pass this over to them. Look at the galaxy dress. I'm holding on to this post-it. I wrote it down in the dark about 11.15 during the news last night. I was like, oh, my gosh. The galaxy dress. Oh, let me see. Look, over there. The girls have it. Okay. Look, it's made of some sort of girdleistic fabric. And it comes down below your knees. It's very figure flattering. Holds you in. Lifts your butt. Does all that stuff at one time. Oh, I like it. I like the green. It's some, That's the one I said it was ugly. <laughs> I like the green. The point is, is that they, they, Bergdorf's is sold out of them. You think you can locate one of those? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get on this. This is... Yeah. Ooh. Is it's, it all of them? It, it's, well, I'm sure there are more. Those, those celebrity girls just happen to be uh, photographed in them. Aren't they great? Yeah, they are. Oh, God. It'd probably do wonders for my shape. Exactly. Hello. Okay. And they come down nice and, you know, right past your knee. How yeah. flattering. It is. Oh, here. Here's the street name. The galaxy dress. Please don't throw away that stuff. No, I'm serious. I need a dress for the Christmas party with a purpose. Oh, okay. December 17th. That's the cutoff date. Oh, I want to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice cocktail dress. Holds it all in. Everybody, you know, oh, you're so skinny. Thank you. Galaxy dress. <laughs> they say Kelly Ripa is out of control. They, oh, and you know what? Kelly, friend in my head, I absolutely believe it. You want to know why I believe it? <clears throat> because... You got your Regis show, you got the sitcom. It's not even like, like these are s small sidebar operations. You know, like if, you ha if, a, if a woman has her main job, which her main job would be like whatever her main career job is, and then her other main job is like her family, like you get kids and then your husband, two separate entities. You know, because if you got your kids, then at least, you know, you only have to tend to them when you get home. But if you get your husband, then you got that thing throbbing on your back. At 2 o'clock in the morning, you understand? So there's a lot going on. And then she's got to wake up and she's got to go to her main job, which I list to me as Regis and Kelly. But she's got to give the same kind of energy and just as many hours to faith and hope. You see? It's not like she's a spokesperson for United Airline. You know, you go, you quickly shoot a commercial and then that's it. And you get cream on top of cream. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? And then those kids, she's got a whole farm at home. It's not like she just has one or, or one sex where all she has to buy is blue. Blue for a three-year-old, blue for a five-year-old, blue for an eight-year-old. She's got the girl and a plethora of boys. Then she's got that Latin lover. And boy, that thing is, you know, if the legend is true, well, he's got his Zorro sword out every day for her. Now she's down to 98 pounds and she's getting crotchety with Regis and just nasty. They say she's like a ticking time bomb ready to blow. I'll tell you what, the best thing that can happen for her is that they cancel that show Hope and Faith. I think I'm the only one who watches it, and I barely watch it anymore because I always got to go home on a Friday night and take a damn disco nap to go out and do my 30th job. But my extra jobs are like small jobs with good payoff, but small jobs. That's why I can't write my own books and self 
uh, 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 published? Are you crazy? I got my Karen Hunter talking to a little, you know, tape recorder, you know, then she configures everything and sends it all over to the Random House Doubleday family. And next thing you know, you know what I mean? Like a book is coming out. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't imagine doing something that is as demanding as the radio. When you got the radio, the kid, and then that throbbing thing. Yeah. Mama! Oh, please. <laughs> so they're saying that the ratings on Hope and Faith, this is the Kelly Ripper show, you know, it's the sitcom. It comes on Friday nights. I love it. I go home. This is what I do. I get in the house at, like... Maybe 7.45 on Fridays. During the winter, the traffic is not as bad. I get in like 7.45. And I spend until 8.30 with little Kev, you know, plating the food and talking about, you know, the week and what we're going to do on the weekend and stuff. Then at 8.30, I put him in the bed and I immediately turn on that show, Super Nanny. I love that show. I love that show. And then I watch Faith and Hope and, you know, the ABC lineup. Sometimes it's the Reba or whatever. Unless I have to take a disco nap, in which case I go to sleep. And then which, I, which one is it, Faith and Hope or Hope and Faith? I, I don't know. Up. I don't know. Whatever. And then I wake up. I set the alarm for midnight, you know, and I get all my clothes laid out and the hair that I'm going to wear. And then I, you know, do that, blacken my eyes with a little coal, you know, open the door for Risha, who's in the studio right now. She comes over and babysits. And then I slam the door and go out into the nightlife. I fall back in the door at 6 o'clock in the morning. Hey. Risha gathers up her stuff and she goes on home. I offer, do you, you want to stay? You do it. She only lives like a mile away from our house, though, right? She goes, to, she goes to Montclair State, so, you know, she lives in the dorms right around the corner. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so they're saying that the ratings for Regis and Kelly, I mean, for um, the Hope and Faith, are not that good. And so probably the best thing that could happen for Kelly Ripa, because if she's a driven woman, she's not going to quit because she doesn't want to prove the naysayers wrong. So if they just cancel her and since ABC also carries not just Hope and Faith, but Regis and Kelly, if I'm with the executives, I would just cancel the damn show so you can get your Kelly back for the bigger product because the bigger product, the more bigger money making product. I mean, that, you know what I mean? I mean, that's the NBA. Hope and Faith is like intramural sports in the bigger scheme of money making at ABC. So if this is draining this woman's credit, put her out of her own misery and just cancel the show. And then they're taking a survey about, you know, all what's it doing with public perception of her on the show. Regis and Kelly. And here's some of the comments coming up. Too skinny, fake. Unrelatable requires too much attention. Wow. Recent research uh, shown uh, says that the viewers are starting to get turned off by her, just like they became turned off by Kathy Lee. I love her husband as the gooch on the show. I don't mind looking at him. Here's Michelle in Weehawk, and she says, I've got a celebrity spotting iced tea and cocoa tea in Edgewater. Love your show, girl. What were they doing? Having sex? They can't keep their hands off each other. Shout out to Ice Tea and his lovely wife, Cocoa Tea. I think that's, I don't think that's a legal wife, but that's what he calls her. Wifey, we'll call her in the street vernacular. I like those two. They've been together for so long. And everybody thought that, you know, she was just some fly by night, you know, or something like that. You never see him without her. And I like her. She's got a good personality. She always answers all the questions. And so does he. I like them. Iced tea and cocoa tea. Boy, when they come to a party, boy, that's a real party. You know, she comes all naked. No panties. And he's not even like, you know, stop looking at my woman. You know, like, like to other guys and stuff. You know, he's flattered by that. 
They've been together for like five years. You got to respect that. <clears throat> and he's not the father of that woman's baby in the Bronx. The paternity test came back. The headline about him being the father was bigger than the actual, you know, DNA test. He's not the father. And she went so far as to name this kid Tracy Morrow. And that's Ice T's government name. Because that's wow. what a hoe will do wow. when they really want to trap you and get your dough. And you know what? Part of it is believable that Ice-T might have this child just because of perception. Yes, he's got money, but he's also a pimp. Yes, he, you know what I mean? Perception sometimes really ruins it. But you can't deny the DNA test. Congratulations, Ice-T. Coco T, I know you're breathing a sigh of relief. Because if he had to divide up money with a rug rat and pass child support... That'd be less money for you to spend on those tight, cheap dresses you wear. <laughs> I love it. I meant that in the best way, Coco. Ice tea, you too. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm getting all kind of legal messages regarding Steve Stout, Dave Mays. Oh, this one's signed off by days. I can't, I can't go back and forth with the bickering. Just like my head is still spinning from high five. All the fight. As far as I'm concerned, this is high five. They sang. They hit their notes. <clears throat> They're going to send their CD over. Art's a big fan. He took the CD and went on the boat. I have no idea what the CD sounds like. But now I'm all interested in listening to it. And, you know, possibly, is Stacey Anderson still here? She's our music director. Stacey, look out for a package from High Five. I told them, I said, send it to Stacey. They'll listen to it in a music meeting. Because they represent today's R&B since they're back. And yesterday's uh, stuff. With I Like The Way. The Kissing Game song. Tanya Hardy has gained so much weight. Boy, I'm going to tell you something. She looks like FPWT. And the F is for fat. Just look at Tanya Harding, but pass this back because I got to tell the story. Did you hear about that kid? Huh? Yes. All right, pass it back. Stop staring. No, no, not around. Pass it back. That's oh. my story. Did you hear about that five year old kid that weighs 212 pounds? Hold on. We'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> so, Tanya Harding, who, you know, a lot of us, you know, recognized once she, you know, had that fight with Nancy Carrigan. Well, apparently she's in trouble again. She had a fight with her boyfriend, Christopher Nolan. They apparently live in Washington State. She's now 34 years old, and the outcome of the fight is that she's got cuts all over her eyes and abrasions all over her face and, and cheeks, resulting in the scuffle. Initially, she told the 911 dispatcher, this Tanya Harding did, that she had been assaulted by two masked men who burst into the home. <laughs> she then changed her story to say that she had been assaulted by her 27-year-old boyfriend, Christopher Nolan. At one point, the dispatcher said to 34-year-old Tanya Harding, Tanya, you've told me four different things. This is really happening fast, Tanya replied. Well, back in 2002, she was busted with the DWI, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, the result of this case is that he pled not guilty to fourth degree assault. He was released. He's ordered to stay away from alcohol and Tanya, and he's scheduled to appear in Clark County Court on December 7th. We're free to watch this case. I don't think we have to pay any attention to anything legally until January 9th when Mr. Biggs gets sentenced. Will it be 26 years? I got more on that story, by the way. Hold on. Let me find it. God, this kid is... You know this is a case for Maury Povich. <sighs> Tyra Banks called uh, yesterday. I, play, I had to take the call. I played it earlier today. If you missed it, you can catch it on a best of. With the high five fight, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that going to make it in the best of shows for 2005, or is that an honorable mention? How's that going to work? Probably honorable mention, because I got everything kind of structured out already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're lazy. Bastard. <laughs> you don't feel like going back. I understand. Did I already tell the men that the more sexual partners you have, the more chance of uh, getting prostate cancer? Yeah. Oh, did I tell you guys that? Yes. 
Did I say that in the medical, Wendy's medical minute during, the, during advice hour? Or did I say it on the bonus hour? Uh, I think all men need to find this. Maybe you keep your things in your pants. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> then good. Then you're reaping what you're sowing. <laughs> They says, it says, now this is according to the, the medical people. Men who have had multiple sexual partners and particularly those who get gonorrhea are more likely to also get prostate cancer. For some time, researchers have known that women who have multiple sexual partners and get certain sexually transmitted diseases have a higher risk of cervical cancer. But now the study from the University of Michigan which was presented at San Francisco's annual meeting of American, uh, of the, excuse me, of the American Urological Association, shows that men involved in the same behavior of risky sex and lots of partners are at risk of getting gonorrhea. I mean, um, prostate cancer. They don't say what a lot of partners is. Oh, here it is. The rest of the story. Look at me being all organized. Shut up. Go, Miss Wendy. <laughs> Men who had more than 20 sexual partners were more than three times likely to be diagnosed with prostate cancers compared to men with five or fewer partners. I'm going to ask a personal question. I'm not going to call out names. Is there a man in this room who's had more than 20 sexual partners? Raise your hand. See, Trevor, if you ding a bell, then they know it's you. <laughs> I wanted to keep it private. No, Wait, I'll do ask, they mean per year or uh, da, da, Shut up! <laughs> Don't ask questions, just raise your hand! <laughs> Who in this room who's a man who's had, that has had more than 20 sexual partners right now throughout their entire life? Raise your hand. Okay, there's one man in this... Oh, both men will be dead of prostate <laughs> cancer. <laughs> well... <laughs> well... Men with five or fewer partners are not at risk. Well, what man is that? I know, when you're just starting out as a, at 18. In addition, men who had sex two or three times a month have more than double chance of a <laughs> prostate <laughs> cancer. Oh, my God. You better put that throbbing needle to work. Put, put that where? Back there. More than two or three times a month. <laughs> what do you do for the rest of the month? <laughs> Yo, everybody, did you hear about the story about the woman who glued her man's Richard to his stomach and, and super glued his butt crack and his booty hole? <laughs> And he woke up to the burning sun. No, I'm not lying. Look, I think I saved the story for you guys for the bonus hour. I think I did it in like the two o'clock hour. I think about you for the bonus hour. I do. I think about you and there's stuff that I throw away. Then there's stuff that I save for, you know, I do a two minute down low, uh, which is nationally syndicated, separate and apart from this four hour show. Um, certainly not as taxing as a sitcom would be like to Kelly, but it's one of my side hustles. And then there's other stuff that I save. Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> Why do I have that damn song? It's where I wanna be, boy. Going on in my head. Damn you, Jones. Damn you! <laughs> Please. Oh, you gotta hear this. I saved it for you on the bonus hour. Oh my gosh, though. Why do I do this with my gum all the time? I'm like a nasty. <laughs> Blabu. You know, as opposed to throwing the gum in the garbage or whatever, I, I stick it every place. You, do girls ever notice when you pick up my stuff to bring it in, there's, there's, there's two pieces of gum sitting on my paperwork from the day before? I'm not sure if I should throw it out or if you're trying to save it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. oh, my gosh. Art, I mean, Bruce, I mean, oh, my <laughs> Bruce. <laughs> Goose, which rhymes with Bruce. See, it's all making sense. I'm not going into a break. All right, well, I can judge the story up in my mind. I remember telling you. Uh, them, earlier. Damn, where's the story? Okay, well, look. So the woman had been with the man for, like, 10 months. She had had it up to here with him. I forgot what it is that he had done. I was so distracted by her act of revenge. Part of me was remembering every last tidbit in case I had to judge that up for somebody later on in life. <laughs> 
Um, she super glued his thing to his stomach. Now, my first question in my mind is, wow, how, wow. you know, I mean, to wow. his stomach. My gosh, that's quite a stretch. But then again, hey, you know, like some men, when they sleep, if you're sleeping on your back and you, you've, you know, pitched a tent, then, you know, then you super glue it while it's right there. Then when he goes flaccid, when he goes flaccid, then it's going to hurt because it can't zhuzh down because it's all super glue, right? And then you wait for him to roll over and you just drop all that glue along the seam, right along the boot, right, right here, right? Wow, imagine that. That's better than Lorraine and Bob, and I'm sorry. I mean, she just did. That was a, like a no-brainer. You cut it off. That is so no-brainer. That is the non-thinking woman's, you know, act of revenge. I mean, you wanted to use, ooh, the booty. <laughs> Ow. Oh, here's all the information on the galaxy dress. Dress. Okay, but we've got to take a break. That's okay. I'm going online to um see if I can... Just order it. Oh, here's the website. I'll share it with you guys after I get mine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and please don't wear it to the Christmas party with the purpose on December 17th at the Marriott because I'm going to wear one. <laughs> Bunch of broad standing there nursing drinks and galaxy dresses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad it's the weekend. Go to Miami tomorrow to check out my family. Tree in the pool, roof blown off, no electricity, <laughs> kids out of school. <sighs> Let's go into the break. Vaughn's coming up at 7 o'clock with the Quiet Storm. We'll finish out the bonus hour. I'm going to take your phone calls, too, coming up next. So um, make sure that you, you know, speak clearly and have your radios turned down. Thanks. 107.5 WBLS. Well, this thing is fun, and the winning is easy. Hey, Marlo. Yeah? You're going to love it even more, because I just going to hand you $1,000. Oh, my God. Thank you, Steve. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Oh, God. Thank you. It's the $107,000 cash guarantee. I'm getting married in March. Thank you so much. From 107.5. What's your favorite station? WBLS, the Steve Harvey Show. Yo, what's up? This is Morris Chestnut, and you're listening to The Bonus Hour on 107.5 WBLS. Thank you, Morris. This hour is brought to you by, oh, Cafe Bahia. It's the place to be tomorrow night with Bob Lee for the BLS Live broadcast. That's right. Can you, before we leave the show, go to MOOnTheLoose.com and see if um, the picture of my feet <laughs> is on there? <laughs> Last night at the cocktail party, we like turned around and there was this woman literally down on the floor taking pictures of my feet in my shoes. And at first she was just snapping away and I wasn't posing. I was standing with my drink and talking. When I finally acknowledged her, I didn't ask her to get up, you know, whatever floats your boat, I guess. Oddly enough, I didn't mind that as much as somebody, you know, taking a picture of me from here up. You know what I mean? Except for I had on the same shoes for like eight hours and I knew that my feet were swollen. Plus, my pantyhose only thinly veil my eczema. They don't hide it. So I'm just curious to see whether the shoes are going to pop up with my feet in them. And fortunately, they only show your feet. They don't show your face. Well, you said black Gucci shoes, right? I was wearing black, <clears throat> round toe, Gucci heels with um, brass grommets and a, a brown wooden heel, five inches. And there were interlocking brass G's on the back of the heel, five inch heels. A caller called in and said that your feet are on there. If you click on, like, um, today's feet. No, well, you, can you do it the right way, Trevor? What's the matter with you? Where is art? Art would have rushed to a foot website like that. <laughs> That's not even a foot fetish website. Emma on the loose dot com. I guess it's a girl named Emma. She looked a little like Drew Barrymore. I'm on shoe of the day. Yeah, shoe of the day. She said it was on there. A call was on here. Keep looking, <laughs> Wendy. 
I'm an avid listener of The Experience, a loyal fan. I have your two books. I purchased um, You're a Wonderful Person, and so is Steve Harvey, the best thing on radio. But my beef with you is your comments that you made the other day um, that you're glad that you found out that you're not a run-of-the-mill black. Please don't start thinking you're the shh and you're the shh don't stink, and you'll lose a bunch of listeners in the process. You have always been a friend in my head since you've come to WBLS, and I'll continue to listen to your show, but I want you to know <clears throat> that I took umbrage to your remarks and I believe... No, that's not my foot. No, I'm just showing yeah, you. So when I, when I flash past it, you tell me when to stop. Well, I can't read and look at the same I'm time. <laughs> All right. Well, just, remember, it was black, five inches, and a round toe. So can you please, you know, you do it. I'm trying to read. Umbrage to your remarks and believe that you owe the African-American community an apology, even though I know you meant what you said. No, I didn't mean what I said. I was joking. You have an extremely, in, uh, you're an extremely intelligent woman, but your ignorance was really showing when you made the comment about being better than someone else. By the way, isn't your mother African American? Therefore, your own son is like at least partially African American. Are you better than them too? Love Helen of Verizon. Helen of Verizon, you took it way too seriously. First of all, I just found out that my that's it. Back up. I think that's my foot. Back up. I, that might might have been my foot, but I. I just found out like two years ago that my my paternal grandfather, who I never knew, uh, you know, passed away, uh, is is uh, Bayesian and from Barbados. But please, I've lived the majority of my life being a plain old run of the mill splabu. And I don't mean that in a bad way, because I think that there are a lot of African-Americans, goose, help me out, who tend to believe that Caribbean, you Caribbean people, see, I'm not going to even include myself. I mean, I feel honored to be a part of something, but I don't really feel a part because I didn't grow up eating fly fish and stuff. I didn't find <laughs> out until it's too damn late. You know, I'm already who I am. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was, oh, why am I over explaining this? Helen, relax. What I was doing is <clears throat> expressing the opinion that many African Americans, many plain old run of the mill black people have about Caribbean people. Goose, you know this. Which you, is real. Which is you were Caribbean. Real. Caribbean people tend to feel as though they're better than black people, black Americans. Caribbean people tend to play to the white man hard. <clears throat> Goose? But I mean, it's not about, you know, it's not a it's, general. Right. You, know. you can't make a general statement. But, and however, you know a lot of black... Oh, why am I talking about this? Because Helen from Verizon is a dear listener, and she thinks that I owe everybody an apology. She thinks I'm better than... Or I think that I'm better. I don't think I'm better than nobody. Caribbean, black, white, whatever. Thank you, High Five. They rushed the CD up here. I'm not going home. Oh, you, okay. See ya. <laughs> oh, well, then I'm left to press my own buttons. Never mind. Look, um... I'm going home to take my disco nap. Then I'm going out to the streets. I'm going to Miami first thing in the morning. Thank you, High Five, for dropping off the CD. I don't see my feet on there. Keep going. Just, just keep clicking. My shoes are on Emma. Are they on Emma? Emma at loose dot com. Yeah. Emma on the loose. Did you turn around and just see her down at your feet and wondering what the hell she was doing? She had. She came over. She had to get my right. picture first, and I was like, "What is it?" She was like, excuse me, can I take a picture of your shoe? And I was like, why? Yeah, exactly. First and thing I you knew her, I was like, why? And she's like, you know, I have this website, I'm on loose. I like the idea, though. She goes around and takes pictures of people. Can That's you not my shoe is mine. Cool. Okay. Yours is not on there. Nicole, oh. Nicole is on there. Okay, so mine's not on there. Okay, so stop looking. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm going to stop looking. What's your shoe? So people can so look. Elisa Payne, who books the show, her shoes are on there, too. Yes, I'm the purple. Um, I have a peekaboo toe purple suede pump. Okay. okay. All right. Well, have a good weekend, everybody. You look for her feet, and we're going home. I love you for listening, and thank you for being here. Uh, Vaughn is up next with The Quiet Storm on 107.5 WBLS. Bye-bye. Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Oh, man. 